Welcome to Electro Online. So we should have a methodology to find the inverse of the function, and yes, there it is. This is the methodology. This is how we find the inverse of a function. We start with the original function, and let's say that the original function is y equals 2x plus 4. The first thing you do is you interchange all the x's and the y's. You make every y an x and every x a y. That's all you do. And then the next step is to solve for y. So then what we do is we we turn the equation around so we end up with 2y is equal to x minus 4 because the 4 goes to the other side and becomes minus 4. Let me put one more intermediate step in there. So what I did was I brought the 4 to the other side so we have x minus 4 equals 2y and then I simply turn the equation around 2y equals x minus 4 and then I divided both sides by 2 to get y equals 1 half x minus 2. And then all you have to do is say well there's the inverse of the function. The inverse of the function equals 1 half x minus 2. And so it's actually rather simple. All you do is interchange x and y and then solve what you end up, at, what you end up with for y. Now true, in some cases the algebra to solve for y after that could get kind of complicated, no question about it, but the procedure is relatively simple. So let's try our hand in this example right here. That's the example we had on the previous video. So we had y equals 5 nines x minus 32 that was converting Fahrenheit degrees to Celsius degrees and now we want to find the inverse of that function so the first thing we do is we replace every x by y so what we're going to do this y now becomes an x this is equal to 5 over 9 times and this x now becomes a y and minus 32. All right, now I have to solve that equation for y. So the first thing we're going to do is multiply both sides by 9 to get rid of that fraction. So multiply the left and the right side by 9. So end up with 9x is equal to the 9's cancel out, 5 times y minus 32. The next thing we're going to do is, let's see here, hmm, let's multiply everything out. So we have 9x is equal to 5y minus 160. Oh yes, yes, yes. For a moment there, as something was wrong, but no, no, I'm on the right track, 160. And so now what we need to do is bring the minus 160 to the other side. So we end up with 9x, that becomes now plus 160 equals 5y. So now we have 5y is equal to 9x plus 160. And now we're going to divide both sides by 5, and we end up with y equals 9 over 5x plus 160 divided by 5 is 32. And there we go, there's the inverse of that original function. The original function, we can write it like this, f of x is equal to 5 over 9 times x minus 32, and then we can say that the inverse of that function, f inverse of x, is equal to 9 over 5x plus 32. So there's the inverse of this original function, and that is how we got there. Exchange the x's for the y's, the y's for the x's, solve for y, and there's the inverse function. That is how it's done. Is it a temperature for the Fahrenheit and the Celsius is the same? That is absolutely correct. There's a point where the same number is used for Celsius degrees as Fahrenheit degrees. Do you remember which one? No. You can draw the graph and see where it intersects. It's pretty cold. It's pretty cold indeed. Um, well, it turns out, no, you can't quite do it that way. But it turns out the number is minus 40. At minus 40 degrees, Celsius degrees is the same as Fahrenheit degrees. And that's cold. Then we'll draw the graph. Why, why won't the graph work? No, because at that point, um, it's not an intersection. It's simply you're going to end up with a graph. If you, if you graph this function, it doesn't matter which function we graph, of course. Um, we could graph this function if you like. And so if you do that, we have plus 32, like this. And 9, 5x, that's almost like 2x, so it's quite steep, like this. And so that's what that will look like. And you really can tell from the graph where the value for x will equal the value for y. Somewhere down here. <laughs> so you can't really tell. You can graph the other one? Um, so what if I graph the other one? Okay, let's graph the other one, although 
you'd have to rewrite that. So you end up with minus 160 over 9. So you end up with, um, let, me, let me try. So if we go this way, we have y equals 5 over 9x and minus 160 over 9, which is roughly about 18 or so. So you'd start down here somewhere and you'd have a curve like this. Look at that. And guess what? I have to get out of the way here. But yes, at some point, if you graph both functions, they will cross somewhere. And that is at minus 40 this way. And that would be at minus 40 that way. Hmm. Yeah, minus 40, minus 40 like that. Hey, that is uh, brilliant. <laughs> 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 yes, if you, t if you graph the function and the inverse of the function, where they meet will be at minus 40. <laughs> All right. Well, my wife is pretty smart. <laughs> Wasn't smart enough. <laughs> to stay away from me, that's true. 